Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello, everybody. Hello and welcome to the Earth Show here at USA Global TV and Radio. My name is Roland, Roland Friedel, and I'm the creator, the host of the show. And because I dedicated my life to respect Mother Earth, to do everything to protect Mother Earth and to respect Mother Earth in educating people, but foremost, just to be a role model on my, on my daily basis, what I'm daily doing uh, to respect Mother Earth. And it's all about in this show. It's not about finger pointing. It's not about rules and regulations. Uh, it's not about that. It's about giving you an opportunity to learn what you can do on a daily basis. It's it's all of it about the small steps. You know, it's not about large thing. And I strongly believe it always starts with ourselves. It's not about the government, companies, or whatever. No, it always starts with ourselves. Well, normally the show runs with my co-host Marcin. He's off today because he has some really, really bad network challenges. So I do it by myself. And yeah, this show um, today is about food waste, wasting food, which is a huge, huge problem. And we also have, can have a huge, huge impact on our environment and on the long term on Mother Earth when we waste less food. Because actually, you know, for um, many, many people in the world, food waste, from, from my experience, has become a habit. So, so buying more food than we need, we buy at the market, so we buy more than we need. Uh, we're letting fruits and vegetables spoil at home, or we take larger portions, uh, much more larger than we can take. When I, when I, I, I remember when I used to travel for business many, many years, I really was a little bit fed up when I saw people going to the buffet in a hotel and plates like this, and then they don't finish. You just waste it, let it over. And it's not good. And, and I think that this habits put an extra, absolutely an extra strain on our natural resources because we waste, we just waste it. We don't use it and damage our environment too. And, and so what I mean is when we waste food, we waste the labor, the effort, the investment, and the precious resources like water, seeds, feed, etc., that go into the uh, into production of this food. So, not to mention the resources that go into the transporting. So we transport also the food, we process this, we buy processed food. So in short, wasting food increases greenhouse gas emissions and contributes to climate change. And I think it's a big problem. In fact, worldwide, tons of edible food are or wasted every single day. I mean, when I, when I uh, walk by on supermarkets, for example, late in the evening, when they bring all the food out that is just they couldn't sell and uh, bring it to the, the garbage bin, or when I see people uh, in restaurants and so on, they have huge, huge food that has been wasted. So between harvesting and retail alone, our retail say that around 14, 15 percentage of all food produced globally is lost. And huge quantities of food are also wasted in retail, as I said, just throw it away, or at the customer's level, meaning at home. And the part of food that is lost from harvest up, but not including the retail level, is called food loss. And the part wasted at the consumer or retail level is referred as a food waste. So from the production, until it comes to the retail shop, it's we talk about food loss that is lost on transportation and lost in the harvesting on the processing. Um, manufacturing is food loss and food waste. It's what retailers 
uh, uh, bring to the garbage, go away, or what customers, consumers uh, throw away at home or in restaurants. So we make this distinction to address the root cause of the problem, a problem that any, everyone, I strongly believe that everyone uh, from farmers and producers to customers and the shop owners can help end. It's all about working together. But we're talking here about consumers, maybe you run a retail shop or, we are a re or, uh, or maybe you're a farmer or maybe even you have a restaurant or whatever. It's also interesting from you from a professional point of view. So reducing food loss and waste is actually essential in a world where millions of people go hungry to bed every day. And I strongly believe when we reduce waste, we res also respect that food is not a given for the millions of people who go hungry every day to bed. And actually it's up to us to change our habits, to make not wasting food a way of life. And I, I designed a small presentation with a few slides with a, some tips that you can do on a daily basis. So let's bring up the presentation. And I wanna show you here some easy, really daily easy actions you can take to reconnect to food and what it stands four so i guess it's 17 steps i found maybe it's more you know it's maybe it's not complete so you are highly highly invited uh if you have an idea of what we can do in essential in, in addition please go to our website respect mother earth or on our email address con contact at respect mother earth.com and we always love to have a nice conversation with you, what you are doing maybe in your uh, community or what you're doing on a daily basis at home. But let's get started with the first slide. So the first thing is avoiding waste food is, actually it's a very important one, it's also very, very healthy for yourself, is start adopting, if you don't do already, start adopting a healthier, more sustainable diet. You know, I mean, life is just very fast paced. I notice most people are really in a threat mill, you know, going uh, to work every day. I, I know that most people don't can afford the same life I do. I'm traveling all the time uh, and, and I work remotely. That's because the, I that's the lifestyle I choose. So I have a lot of time to, to buy <coughs> regional stuff, local stuff at local farmers. Uh, I don't buy any prepared. Uh, canned food, frozen food, processed foods, always cook for myself. Very few times I go to small restaurants, local restaurants. I know that most, for most people it's not possible because they really have a, a fast paced uh, life and for them, for them preparing nutritious meals can also uh, be a challenge. I, I'm, I'm totally aware of that, but I strongly believe that healthy meals don't have to be very elaborate. Because, you know, the internet is really, really full of quick, healthy receipts that you can share with your family and friends. So if the why is strong enough, as I always say, the what and the how shouldn't be an issue. So first of all, adopt a healthier, more sustainable diet, uh, meaning eat less processed, processed food from supermarkets, uh, cook yourself fresh stuff every day. Uh, it's it's possible and it hasn't been it has it's not a really huge effort you find a lot of quick receipts that are healthy delicious and easy going so the first one secondly buy only what you need that's very very important i know when you're busy you know we, we use maybe you used to weekends <laughs> i don't know uh drive saturday to the supermarket and buy the whole stuff for the whole week or even for two weeks because you have a very very busy monday to friday at, at the office or where you're working from but i it's all it's everything about planning you know and it's it's everything about taking responsibility and being more conscious about it so please plan your meals make a shopping list and stick to it make a clear shopping list plan your meals for the week that's what i do make a shopping list what you need and avoid actually avoid impulse buying. Um, I, I know when we, when we go somewhere, when I, wanna, I, I mentioned it in previous shows, I'm not a supermarket fan. I sometimes I go there to buy toilet paper, sometimes water, but I buy at local markets or from farms. But even on local markets, sometimes I buy more than I really need because I see this and I see this, and especially when I'm traveling in, in different parts, especially here in Europe now, in France, oh, I see this cheese or this cheese or in Portugal, this and this. I sometimes I buy more than I need, but uh, because I want to try all the stuff up. But please, blend, blend your meals for the week. Uh, 
it's it's fun, you know. Plan your week that you have less stress about cooking. Make a shopping list what you need on ingredients. Uh, stick to it and avoid impulse buying. And not only will you waste less food, you it also saves money. It absolutely saves money. So my second tip for you is buy only what you really need for cooking. And don't buy all the other stuff, okay? Don't buy too much. Um, by the way, what I found out is um, um, with friends of mine, sometimes I go with them to supermarket um, and they always try to buy huge quantities, you know, family package is much cheaper. And I, to be honest, I'm a person that always have my readings class with me because sometimes when I go to supermarket and buy something, I always read it the ingredients totally because I want to know what's in so because I there are many many ingredients I don't want to have in my body so I always read them the small printing and what I found out is I always look at the price and compare it what it uh, costs per ounce or per pound on Europe per kilo or per liter and I found out that the the, the family packages the large packages most supermarkets promote they are not cheaper than a small one yeah. They're not compared with the, you know, with the same quantity. <laughs> Sometimes they're more expensive. So yeah, really be careful and don't buy too much. It doesn't make sense at all. It's not cheap at the end of the day. And it's also not cheaper when you, when you, when, when it's, when, you know, when, when it's, when, when you can use it anymore, when you throw it away, then it's also wasted money. Secondly, uh, this might be challenging for somebody. That's what I learned from my grandma in my early, and when I was young and later again, pick up ugly fruit and vegetables. Please, please don't, and especially in the US, because I traveled many times to US when I, when I go to a supermarket, you know, all these fruits are polished and, and waxed and look <laughs> nice, but I know that they're not really tasty and they're not really um, full of ingredients that they should be, especially the, the, the phytochemicals. So please pick up ugly fruits and vegetables like beer, organic uh, fruits and vegetables. Um, so my, my, my call out for you is don't charge food by its appearance. That's what we are trained on it, but it's not true. Don't charge your food by its appearance. Oddly shaped or bruised fruits and vegetables, from my experience, are often thrown away because they don't meet arbitrary cosmetic standards. <laughs> it's really ridiculous, yeah? So don't worry, they taste the same, mostly much better. And and the other way is when you have, you, well, yeah, when, I, when, I, when I go to the market, uh, buy really, and use mature fruits for smoothies, juices, or desserts. Okay, and even at home, if they're mature and maybe didn't look any more good, make a juice out of it, make a smoothie or whatever. Don't throw it away. Okay, so please don't judge food by the appearance. That's why we trained. I know we're very visual. I, what I do, what I learned, I remember man, man, over 30 years ago, I was studying on a university in Spain and I had a, I rented a room out there with, 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 and this, this lady, Donna Lucia, Donna Lucia, she was cooking every day, fresh. And, you know, I, I always loved to cook even when I was, I was a student. So I always tried to learn some different receipts. And I went with her to the market and she showed me how to buy a good melon and really try it and smell it and knock on it. And, you know, it's really in a good shape. So uh, smell, I, what I do when I see food, especially fruits, I smell. Do they smell good? Yes or no? I don't look uh, on the appearance. Okay, so tip number four, when you bring food at home, please store food wisely. Um, so move all the products to the front. You mean first in, first out, uh, in the front of your cupboard or your fridge and new ones to the back. So that makes sense. Use airtight containers. So if you have so to keep open food fresh in the fridge, and please ensure the packets are close to stop insects from getting in. Okay, so store wisely at home. When I say uh, ensure packets are close, especially when you buy rice, flour, stuff like that, uh, then they can become insects and then you have to throw it away after a while when they start flying away. Okay, so please store wisely. Uh, I guess I have an, <laughs> another slide comes later again. I, I, I'm not quite sure, but I call it first in, first out. I just remember when I prepared the presentation, I, I guess it is double. So first in, first out. So what's the older one in front and what's new in in the back? It happened to me too, you know. I, I, I'm, I was in the learning process too about it. You know, buy the new brew in the front and you eat the new one and you forget the older one and then you throw it away. doesn't make sense. Okay, so store wisely 
at home. Very important topic too. Then it's an interesting one. I know it's sometimes a little difficult, but understand or learn to understand food labeling. I mentioned uh, earlier that I always go with my reading class in the supermarket. And sometimes, you know, they increase, I don't know how it's in the US, but in Europe, sometimes uh, producers try to avoid that you find out what it's really in. So that they, they write it very small. So you, I, you mostly I can't even read it with my classes. Sometimes I ask friends, I say, no, no, I can't read it too. So what I do is I photograph it with my smartphone and make the picture, picture large because I'm always interested. Even sometimes I buy canned food for the animals, you know, meat and, and for the cat and for the dog who are driving me. And even there, I always look if there's no sugar in the cereal. So understand food leveling. Uh, but it uh, this topic is not about uh ingredients it's more about labeling meaning learn the, the big big difference between best before and use by dates there was a difference between best before dates and use by dates because sometimes you know food is still safe to eat after the best before date for sure okay best before date doesn't mean that afterwards it's you cannot enjoy it Whereas the use by date that tells you when it's no longer safe to eat. Okay, so when you say best before, afterwards, uh, sometimes you know I I um, I, I get stuff uh, 30, 50 percentage much cheaper because it says best before and it's tomorrow, the, the date of tomorrow, and I buy it and I eat it two three days later, no problem at all. Okay, best before we really can eat it much later. That's absolutely no problem. When it says use by, then you have to be more careful. So check food labels for unhealthy ingredients, as I said before, such like uh, trans fats and preservatives and avoid foods with added sugar or salt when you have a salt problem. But I'm, I'm not much into avoiding salt. I love salt, but try to avoid added sugar. But actually for sugar, we could do a whole presentation because, you know, the industry uh, gets more and more clever. Sugar is very, very sweet. So everywhere sugar, even <laughs> a story by side. I went with my cat to the wet. Uh, she had some issues and I did some blood tests. And it told me, yeah, uh, kidney is okay, liver, some problems. And she has high sugar levels. I said, well, high sugar. She's only eating meat. My cat is only eating meat. And I found out that, you know, the company uh, where I buy the meat in, in the can, you know, they put sugar in. I didn't see it, yeah, on the label. They put sugar in. Uh, it's, it's really ridiculous. And really, they're, they're doing more and more tricks, and they have different, different names for sugars. So avoid sugar, avoid trans fat and preservatives, and many, many E numbers that are not healthy. And by the way, I don't know if you got the discussion the last weeks and months that more and more insects will be also in, in food and already are in food, like in bread and in pasta. I'm not, I'm, I don't worry about it at all because I don't buy all the stuff. But if you buy pasta, uh, bread and stuff like that because I bake my own bread. But if you don't, if you buy it, really have a look at it. What's in, especially insect, are very, very bad for your health. Good. So learn, understand food labeling. Actually, there are some good apps where you can scan the food and then the apps list you up what's in, not only calories and, 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 and yeah, the macros like protein, fat, uh, carbs, and sugar but also to understand all the E numbers, if they're good for you or not. So understand food leveling, very, very important. And by the way, you know, <laughs> I always say, you know, I, um, I don't understand when you, know, when you eat something, you have to be clear that it's in your body and this food becomes part of your body. You know, the enzymes that destroy it and make it smaller, smaller, smaller. You mix it with liquid or aqua, aqua with water. It comes into your blood system, and from your blood system, it's transported to your cells and the mitochondria. It's part of your body. Okay, so please, please be aware what you're buying, what you're eating. It's part of your body. Okay, I, I don't understand why people eat, eat so much crap and then they're sick and they don't understand the world. Uh, yeah, it's 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 all about what you're eating. So understand food leveling. Learn about it. Really learn about it. There's a lot of stuff on the internet. There are apps that help you and so on. Go understand food leveling. Tip number six: start small, meaning small portions. <laughs> okay, small portions. So please take smaller portions. And by the way, uh, I know that the the average 
American standard diet is more than 3,500 calories. That's the average American standard, but it's much too high. And we all know that, uh, you know, food reduction or calorie reduction by 20, 25 percentage, and you still have more than 2,500, uh, really, really is very beneficial for your health. So take smaller portions at home. Uh, and share large dishes at restaurants. That's what I do, you know, with my girlfriend. When we sometimes we go to a restaurant, and what we do is we just we share a starter, we share we share a main dish, we share a dessert, and and that's what we do. We always share in small portions, much much better. Okay, it's not, I know especially you, the portions are really really large. So take smaller portions at home, firstly, and the trick is. You know, use smaller plates or, or cups or whatever. Yeah, use smaller plates and smaller, smaller cups. And I, we use bowls. We, I eat a lot of stuff in bowls, smaller bowls. And it's smaller portions. And yeah, start small. Very, very important. And, you know, I, I do a show afterwards about uh, it's the topic is power up your brain. And a huge, huge part of powering up your brain. Uh, being more smart, being more fit, uh, avoiding dementia and all this, this this illness in your brain. It's about fasting and food reduction. Also, start small, smaller portions, okay? Or, and portions are high, uh, large, sorry. Then share it, share it. Good. Number seven, laugh your leftovers. So what I mean with this is um, if you don't eat everything you make, freeze it for later or use the leftovers as ingredients in an, an another meal, whatever it is, or when it's um, just meat, non-processed, non-spicy, I give it to my dog or my cat. So love your leftovers, you don't have to throw it away. Uh, free, freeze it uh, and yeah, use it for later. Or maybe you can use this as an ingredient for a different meal, whatever. Okay, so love your leftovers, don't throw them. Away, please. Number eight, put your food waste to use. What I mean is, uh, instead of throwing away your food scraps, compost them, for example. If you have an option, you know, when you have a uh, little outside the, the city, when you're for a house, do composting. Uh, yeah, you get good compost when you grow your own fruits and vegetables or you're just for your flowers. So please, instead of throwing away your food scraps, compost them. Because this, and when you compost them, this is a way that you are giving nutrition back to the soil. You know, the soil needs the nutrition, and you're also reducing your carbon footprint. Okay, so when you have food waste, I, I sometimes to do, especially when when I peel vegetables and fruits. You know, the peels of the potatoes or the whatever. I don't know when I cut away when, I, when I'm cook. Or I use them. I, I compost them. Okay, good. So put your food waste to use and compost them very good especially for your own garden you know you don't have to buy any fertilizer and you can use it at home when you're for a garden and you're planting your own fruits and vegetables or even just for flowers for to use your own compost well it's also a good idea or maybe you know somebody who loves to uh, have your compost so put it in um uh yeah collect it and once a week you bring it there there are many options you know i always say when the why is strong enough you have an understanding whether why is strong enough the water in the hell shouldn't be an issue so please try compost very good well that's an interesting point respect food and and i guess i messed in the beginning when i said uh and i was traveling and going in hotels and, and uh, people you know having because every, it's all in, you know, the, the, the breakfast buffet or when they go in all in buffet, they make plates like this and then they don't like it, they don't they finish it. And then I always think, oh, this, this, this poor cow, this poor pig really uh, was dying for nothing. Yeah, it's just, just thrown away. It's even not eaten up. So please respect food. You know, food actually connects us all and, and reconnecting with food by knowing the process that's goes into making it is very very critical and, and please read about food production and get to know your farmers food is not just <laughs> do, do not being hungry anymore not starving anymore food is much much more as i said in the beginning it becomes part of your body please please food has such an what we produce it what we use for the production how much water is used how far is it transported 
and stuff like that you know so you food has an amazing amazing incredible impact so please respect food respect mother earth because food connects us all because everybody are is connected and everybody gets an impact well how you eat you know so please reconnect with food by knowing the process that it's made uh read about food production maybe you didn't even know how it's produced how much water is wasted or how much fertilizer is used to have this or have that and get to know your farmers and go to local markets have a conversation for i learned so much from different farmers and some of them we became friends and and it's not only that they buy good stuff from them it's only very very interesting sometimes they invite me to the farm and I see how they grow the stuff or how they uh the, the, the breed their animals very really, very really interesting okay so respect food respect mother earth respect food yeah i mentioned it before please please support local food producers so by because by buying local food a local process you you support family farmers not not the large companies the family farmers most people say i complain yeah the family farmers are less and less and less there yeah you have to support them <laughs> if you don't buy their stuff they die they go bankrupt so please buy local support local small family farmers small businesses in your community small grocery shores grocery shops uh, small businesses in your community because you will also yeah help fighting pollution by reducing delivery distances for trucks and other vehicles as i said transportation you know when the food comes from i don't know from the other part of the country so please please support local producers small businesses small grocery stores small but bu butchers whatever you have small farmers go local better much better quality and, and you get the chance to know where it's coming from where it's coming from who produces them uh, what energy is is invested yeah uh, it's just a, a lovely friendly person you know this 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 person is really uh, has a huge heart is a friendly empathic person you know that, that that this energy is also the food people don't understand that that food is energy you know um so is also when you cook you know uh cook with a good intention because when you are really aggressive or are in a hurry or stressed this energy goes into food and then you feed your kids with them and then you feed cancel i'm sorry and then your kids um uh get the same energy out of the food so they care about it food is energy okay so buy local where there's a good-hearted farmer a, a lovely grocery shop in an open heart and there is a more 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 positive energy in the food and more po positive energy comes to your body yeah um the next point is it's about fishing you know uh, there maybe you heard fish is so important eat more fish eat more fish yes it was true years ago i would say now not anymore um i'm very into uh, ocean fish production and fishing i do a lot of beach cleaning stuff like that those who know me and to be honest, I love fish. I love seafood, in special, but less, 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 less. There are many, many reasons. First of all, eat fish species that are more abundant, such as mackerel or herring. There are more of them, rather than those that are at risk of being overfished, like cod or tuna. I have to tell you, um, I, uh, I've got some interesting figures out last week that over 90 percentage is overfished meaning we have 90 percentage minus fish in the ocean all over the world in all the different than we had 100 years ago there's only 10 percent left 90 percent is not here anymore can you imagine it's not here anymore so only 10 percent left so it's totally overfished it's one point we don't have enough for, for fish and secondly uh with all this plastic waste i mean we had a show about this with all this plastic waste that goes smaller and smaller and smaller fish is really contaminated with microplastics so eating fish especially from the sea is not a good option anymore maybe you get get some nice um, sweet water fish from a river like a trout or something much much better uh, well as i said i love i love fish i love seafood uh, actually i will actually tomorrow is my fasting day uh, but on friday i go for seafood sometimes i, I go for it but i don't eat much much less than in the past so fish i know uh is very healthy for omega but there are other resources for omegas too and so please please buy fish that has been caught or farmed sustainably such as eco leveled and certified fish but eat less okay eat less 
It's not very healthy anymore because of the microplastic and there's not much fish in the ocean anymore. So be aware about this, unfortunately. Yeah, water, you know, water is also part of our food. Please use less water. Doesn't mean uh, don't drink less water. It's very, very important. It means uh, we can't produce food without water. It's a plant or an animal, we need water. So actually, while it's important that farmers use less water to grow food, reducing food waste also saves all the water resources that went into producing it. So be aware about that. So by not wasting, by waste, avoiding wasting food, uh, you also save more water and also please reduce your water intake in other ways too, like fixing leaks or turning off the water while brushing your teeth on stuff like that it's interesting you know <laughs> especially when you want to when you move into a boat or motor home you you very aware about water because your tank is not is not limitless so i know at home you know just you just put, uh turn on uh your water and you let it run and you shower and shower and shower and shower and, shower and you brush your teeth and water's running down and stuff like that so please be aware of water water is 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 a very very important source so use less water be aware of that yeah, this also means keep water clean and keep your soil clean too, because you know some household waste is potentially hazardous and should never be thrown in a regular rubbish bin. I mean, items such as batteries, paints, mobile phones, medication, medicine, chemicals, fertilizer, tires, you know, rubber, ink cartridges, etc., can seep into your soil and water supply too and damaging the natural resources that produces our food so be aware of that too yeah it's an in indirect impact okay what you throw away please don't put it in the in the, the normal garbage bin uh because it can come to the soil it can uh, the ingredient can come to the water pollutes them and we need this water we need the soil to produce food so be aware about this so please keep our soils and water clean very important too Well, I mean, I'm, 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 most people know I'm a carnivore. I eat a lot of meat, but only grass-fed beef, nothing from supermarket, not, nothing from large farms, all of, only from small farms. I know where the, the, the cows and the bulls are only eating grass, no, no cereals, no soya that is transported long distances and jungle is burned down for the, for the producing of soya. But I um, eat meat, yes, but try to eat more pulses and veggies uh, uh as a diet okay so and maybe maybe you you change a little bit your habits on cereals maybe once a week just try small you know, and try eating a, a meal based on pulses or ancient craze like quinoa for example yeah so try different stuff out and and try them uh yeah it's tasty and they're really really i didn't like it in the beginning but they're really really nice receipts for this too yeah as i said there is one slide more and double it's uh, i said already in the beginning the beginning one of the first slide is organize your kitchen with um fifo that means first in first out that's what i said uh, i just repeat it because it's really really uh simple to organize it and really helps you to avoid waste food and throw it away uh, so I repeat it because it's really important. Organize the fridge and the pantry that really can help you to keep track of what you have at home. I, I know there are some uh, fridges with uh, artificial intelligence that tell you exactly what's in the fridge and what you buy the next one. <laughs> I don't know if you need this, not at all, but be clear and, and track what, what you have at home. Let's say even in my motor, you know, I have a lot of storages in the floor and stuff like that. So I, I fill the stuff and then I forget already do I, do I have enough or not and I buy a double doesn't make sense at all so please please track what you have at home help to identify the foods that are ready to eat meaning you know what what you should eat the next day so you don't throw it away because it's um use use by date and as i said fifo stands for first in for out and it's, it actually is a very useful way of organizing food at home and also and many restaurants and grocery stores use this system also reduced waste, so you can do it at home too. So please, as I said, please, please place newly bought foods at the back of the cupboard or the fridge. And this will encourage people to use the food in the front of your kids and your family members. 
which also ensures that it's all this freshness and reduces waste. And for example, for those of you guys who <laughs> keep a lot of tins at home, ensure that the ones closest to the expired date are in the front of the cupboard and use those first for the, for the bins buyer. Good. Yeah, this brings me to the next point. Please, uh, makes also sense, keep a lock of spoiled foods. So what I mean is by writing down the types of food that go bad can help a person to identify the foods that they can cut back on meaning when it happens that you throw something away write it down okay and then you get a nice collection said okay i was i was throwing away i don't know pineapples very often or carrots or bread whatever it is and then you find out okay maybe it's clever in the future to buy less pineapples or less carrots or less bread or whatever it is okay because sometimes we we forget we forget it we just throw it away we don't think about it it's not normally it's not a big issue you know we take it well we don't we don't like it or or uh we said okay it's it's gone it's rubbish so we throw it away we forget it so make a list uh track it and then you find out okay this is very often in the pin so try to avoid it meaning buy less of it so another example for example if, if some if someone finds themselves throwing out many oranges as they go bad the solution is might be to buy few oranges to avoid the spoilage okay or pineapples or whatever and as i said at the beginning that um, i know that sometimes buying larger bags of, or of, pro of products rather than one or two pieces might be cheaper say you know this family bag just the large packages but a person will not save money if they routinely throw it away okay so uh, first of all i said sometimes that the family bag is not really cheaper when you compare it with the same size and uh, and the second is when you throw it away especially when you're a single household when you throw it away then it doesn't make sense to save the money first and then throw it away because you didn't save anything okay so keep a log of spoiled food learn about it and make it next time better yes um now we i guess we're already on this next number and this one i really love sharing is caring so when you have too much food, please donate it. Donate food uh, that would otherwise be wasted. For example, apps. There are apps out of the market that connect neighbors with each other, with local businesses, to, so surplus food can be shared, not thrown away. Actually, here on the road, I do it. Sometimes, you know, I cook something and <laughs> I have a little portion. I'm, I'm, I'm traveling single. As I said, when I have leftover, when it's not spicy, when it's healthy, um, the dog and the cat can eat it. But I give you an example. I was cooking last week a uh, fish curry, a spicy fish curry, and the creole and spicy rice too. It's not, absolutely nothing for my dog and my cat. So it was a huge portion. So I invited other people on, on the camping side. I said, hey, come over. Uh, I'm cooking today. Would, would you love to join me? And we shared it. And they brought a bottle of wine and I was serving the food. And we had fun. So please donate food or invite neighbors or Maybe you give it to, to, to homeless people or whatever. Okay, so share the surplus with other ones. Don't throw it away. Because actually reducing food waste benefits individuals in many ways, including it saves you money from buying it and it saves you money when you buy less and it saves you money when you're wasting less food. So, Actually, as I said, organizing and structuring meals may save a person significant amounts of time. Of course, can do so. And in the long run, and it also makes a person's eating habit, habits much, much simpler and more helpful. And actually, I know that the that, that average consumer is not the greatest, greatest threat on the environment, the single one. I know this. But it, for me, it's still crucial that people take steps to reduce the environmental impact. It starts with you. It's not waiting for others. It's just, it's a, why it's me? It's only me. No, it's just becoming a role model. Talk to other people, become a role model, educate other people. Yeah. And just start with, with you and your kids. Because finding ways to reduce food waste can have a strong individual impact and help create a healthier food future for all of us. I strongly believe this. As I said in the beginning, it's all about us. It's not about the others, how we do it. That's what I do. These are my personal points that I do on a daily basis. So I hope it's helpful for you. If you have any questions, please 
contact me, uh, write an email to contact at respect mother earth. Um, yeah, if you have any ideas what you are doing at home or in your community, how you are yeah, trying to avoid food waste, what you're doing, what, what, what initiatives you're having, I'm very, very interesting. And if it's a good one, we can bring you on the show too. Okay, this was for this time. I hope it was helpful for you. Uh, and as I said, it's all the, a large journey, you know, <laughs> always starts with the first step. So do step by step, get used to it. And it's 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 very good. And I know when you involve your kids, they love it. They really like it, especially kids say, hey, mommy, did you say, you said this and this, don't throw it away or buy less a little bit. Kids are very smart on that. Thank you so much for listening to us are here on USA Global TV and radio at the Earth Show. Yeah, see you again in next week. Uh, in two weeks, actually, we do it all. We broadcast every two weeks. And if you want to learn something about braining up, power up your, yeah, power up your brain, uh, stay tuned uh, and uh, come to the next show in 20 minutes on the Mallorca Connection. I will talk about and give tips about how you can power up your brain. I guess it's more important, very important, because more and more people get dementia or Parkinson or any other issues in the brain. So power up your brain. We start in 24 minutes here on USA Global TV and Radio. That's the station where you get the information that you really need in life that helps you to become a better version of yourself, where you stay healthy and maybe become wealthy. Thanks a lot. See you again. Bye-bye.